Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's review is going to be based on a trilogy by Maddie Moves, the Equilibrix trilogy, Comeback, Connect, and this one here, which is called Project. These are wooden board games, and they're stackable as well, and they're interchangeably played together as well. And they function just like this. Each of them is their own unique abstract game. The Connect is gonna play two to three players, and it's gonna take 10 to 20 minutes. And the Comeback is gonna take 15 to 25 minutes, with the Project taking 60 to 90. This is a more political-based abstract game, and it's a little bit longer and involves more pieces. In this review, I'm going to discuss mainly these two, the Connect and the Comeback, and we'll discuss how they're set up and how they're played, and then I'll go into a little bit of detail with Project as well, which is a little bit more of an in-depth game, which maybe I'll do another video on at some point, or a playthrough, or something like that. So we'll go from one game to the next, and then I'll give you my review. So here we have Connect. This one is based off of, and they are all based off of, the geometric shape called the Flower of Life. This is a three-player game, but you can play it with two players as well. And each player is going to get their own set of these tiles here. There's a yellow player, a red, and if you want, you could add the black player as well. The first player marker and dice in the game, as well as a nice player reference to indicate how you can score other people's pieces, or I should say remove them from play. To set up the game, there's a variety of ways to do it, but the first thing you'll do is you'll, you'll interchangeably place down the main tiles around the game board. If you're playing with more than one player, you'll just simply add the extra player's tiles around the game board. Then you'll choose two pieces for each player, one of each of the different types, and you'll set them around somewhere in the flower of life in the middle that makes the game uh, the same. So I could have it like this, or I could have it like this, or I could have it like this, or I could do something like this, as long as they are of the same positioning, right? After that, then you're basically ready to play. It's really quite simple. For this game specifically, the first player is gonna take one of these die. Then they're going to roll the die. Based on the positioning of the die, you will see the piece that has been placed there and a piece that you're, you're going to place there. So in this case here, I got two of these smaller like straight pieces and they're connected kind of like a V or a U. I'll just make sure that I have to place it just like a V or a U on the game board. Now, what is the point of this game? Well, your objective is to connect all three of your pieces together with the pieces that you are playing from the center of the Flower of Life. So, the first player only gets to use one die, but in every additional turn after that, they will be roll people will be rolling both die. You'll roll the die again, you'll look at the pieces, and based on how they connect, you're going to be placing down the pieces onto the game board. So in this case here, this one is going to be like a U, and the next one is going to be more of like a V. So I could place them like these here. And then once again, the next player is going to get a chance to go, and they will roll the dice. And then they are going to connect pieces as well. Two straight ones here. So in this case here, uh, you have to place them based on one of the pieces being already on the board, and the other piece can be from your pool. So I could place one just like that, and then I could place one like this. And you're trying to get them to connect to these three pieces for, for yellow, and these three for red. And you'll simply go back and forth, rolling the die, placing the pieces, and attempting to connect them. And how you can connect is by touching the pieces that connect to your side pieces here, the side angles. Additionally, in this game, there's another unique little challenge, which involves these symbols here. Each of these represents a way in which if you surround your opponent's piece or pieces, you can remove them from combat. When you do that, they're simply going to go back to that other player's pool and make it more difficult for them to connect their pieces to their color. In addition to that, whenever you've placed something down and other players uh, receive those pieces back, they can then put them back into those same spaces now because they are now protected. You cannot score after placing down your pieces. So for instance, if I had uh, surrounded a player's piece with, let's just say it looks like something like this. There's a, a, a red piece here and I have a yellow piece here and then another red piece here. Now this is not technically a legal move, but just so you get an idea, the yellow piece is in the middle of these two red ones and thusly it's removed from play. However, if this piece is ever placed here again, it's going to be safe. It's only gonna happen when the red player places down to form one of these specific types of shapes. And that's basically this game, that's how it functions. It's a pretty simple, straightforward, abstract game that involves you rolling two dice, positioning your pieces based on the die that were rolled, and trying to connect 
your three colors at the very end with the three uh, or two pieces that you start with in the middle of the flower of life. Equilibrix, connect. Okay, the next one, let's talk about come back. Okay, so we talked about connect, now let's talk about come back. And how this game works is it plays two players and you're going to be either playing as the yellow player or the white player. Take all of the pieces in the game and place them around this area here. It doesn't matter what side's flipped over to begin with, just go ahead and set them around here. Then take the triangle piece and dictate which way you'd like to play the game. There are four different modes and I'm going to show you one of them, which is the timed mode. And I'm going to place it right here. There are extra pieces in the game. There's going to be a bunch of small pieces that have three angles and a few, some that have two. You can go ahead and set two of those aside, one of each, to the side, which can be used for players who are newer to the game. And then all of these pieces here. These can be set aside as well because they are for a specific game mode. Additionally, each player is going to get one of these five plus one tokens, which will let you change the rules of the game, but only once up until you get them again. They kind of function like a hot potato. And then each player is also going to get one of each of the basic small pieces. To begin the game, select the first player and the first player's color. I'll go first and I'm going to be yellow. So I'm going to take the first four tiles and I'm going to turn them all yellow. These are all tiles that I can now choose to place on the board. So if I would like, I can say I want this tile. I will move this triangle to this space and I will take this tile. I can rearrange these to make sure that everything fits, and then I can place this anywhere that it's going to make sense on the grid. I have to make sure that it, it fits in alignment with how the circle of life flows. So in this case, that is how I would place this. Then my turn would be over, and the next player would get a chance to go, and they would flip over the next four pieces to make sure that those four pieces are white. So you would go, and you would take one of these pieces, and once again, you could place it anywhere on the grid that makes sense so that it fits. This piece will move over here, and the next pieces that are up to four are going to flip to my color, which is now yellow. And what I like to do is take that fifth piece and flip it over to white, just so that you know how many pieces that you can take. Now, after you've got your pieces down, you are going to have to select a piece that you see here of these four and connect them to your piece and follow a really interesting rule. You must make sure that any edges of any pieces that you touch, that touch to a circle, are going to be no more than five dots. So if I wanted to, and I wanted to place, for instance, this piece, I could choose to place it right like this, and I'll check the middle of this flower, and I will count the dots. There are one, two, three, and then this one here has one, which is four dots. As long as there are less than five, or five or less, you're okay, and that is correct placement, and you can move on. If I selected a piece that had more dots, like for instance, if I took this piece here and put it like that, that is going to symbolize one, two, three, one, two, three, which is six, and that breaks a rule. You cannot do that, and if you do that, you're going to basically, you, you get disqualified. So I place this piece here, this is going to move, and then we're going to flip over four for the white player. And they are going to select their piece as well. And they have to be very distinguished as to which white pieces they select, because some pieces have a whole lot of dots on them, which are more challenging or difficult pieces. And once again, they are going to place theirs down. So if they place theirs here, it's three, four, and five, which is perfect. No more can be placed in this area for white, because if they do, it's going to be breaking a rule. Speaking of breaking rules, this five plus one piece is a way that you can avoid having to not break, you can avoid not breaking the rule. You can actually break the rules, what I'm trying to say. So the next player that's going to go, which is going to be uh, uh, the yellow player here. I'll right, flip these over. Yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow, yes. <laughs> it's going to be able to say, okay, let's say I want to break the rule. So I can take this here, and if I were to choose to place this in some way, and there's more than five, I can pass this along to the previous player, the other player, and break that rule. However, if I don't have any of those pieces, I'm not going to be able to break the rule. And you're going to move on from there, continuously playing these pieces down as you continue to go throughout the game. And the game, for this specific version, because there are four, is going to end when a player can no longer play any more pieces, because either A, there's no more spots to fill, or B, they can't place without breaking a rule, and they don't have these wonderful five plus one tokens to allow them to change the rules. Do note that you do have little extra bonus tokens that you can utilize if you need to, in order to kind of secure the board or block your opponent from being able to place in certain areas 
areas, but that's basically the idea of the game. Like I said before, there are a variety of other modes to the game that will change how you play the game and will involve you having to connect your pieces in certain way, ways to score certain points, uh, blocking your opponents off from certain areas. Uh, some One of the game modes is going to involve you if you like place your pieces in a way that protect other spaces so that they can't get into there. You'll score based on how many pieces or how many locations are left over at the end of the game that are not taken by your opponent. Um, but that's pretty much the idea of the game. Going around playing a game that's kind of like patchwork in how this thing moves and how you select tokens uh, off around the game board and putting them down onto the field, securing locations, scoring points, and of course avoiding making more than five dots in any single flower specific area. And that's the game. That's how you play the game combat. So we'll talk about the other one here really quick and then I'll give you my review. All right, so this is the last game of the trilogy and it is called Project. This one here is definitely the most engaging and the most complex variant of the three. Additionally, as far as my copies go, this utilizes pieces from the original Connect version of the game. So for the other three colors, because as you see here, I have green, I have blue, and I have white. In order to run red, and in order to run yellow, and in order to run black, you are going to need the pieces from the previous game, as well as the game board. Now that may not be true if you buy this game individually, it might just come with everything, but you'll have to look in the campaign and see how that all works. Regardless though, you'll be setting up this game board based on how it tells you to in the tutorial. There's going to be a lot of pieces that indicate rules as to how you play this game. So this one here is all about working together politically to control the board and utilize your opponents and their uh, and alliances that are formed on these type of boards here to place down and score projects. And projects are going to be requirements that are made and scored based on this track here. This is definitely a more complex variant of the game. I didn't have time to play because I wanted to get the Kickstarter uh, the Kickstarter video out so you guys could see two of the games that I went through and played profusely and quite <laughs> quite enjoyed. Uh, but this one here, there's just a lot to it. I wanted to kind of just give a brief overview that this is a, a more complex variant. This plays up to 90 minutes, up to six players, and utilizes alliances and all of the things that you've learned in the two previous games. So if you kind of enjoyed those type of abstracts and you want to bring something uh, unique into this game uh, and you want to add some more players and you want something to be a little socially abstract then here is another game for you to take a look at and I suggest you check out the Kickstarter campaign to learn even more about the game project. Okay so I'm gonna give you my review not really about this one here specifically but about compact and connect and then you guys can decide if it's something for you and if you want to there's a link down below. Okay, so let's talk about the Equilibrix trilogy of games and I want to talk about the quality first. These are all excellent quality. They are beautiful wooden pieces painted for the color of each player. They don't feel like they're brittle or that they're going to break, so they are used with sturdy wood. Uh, I believe this is like a type of ply. It's got like three different layers. Uh, the dice are also wooden and everything in this is etched. The game boxes are etched. There's unique experiences that come with each of the game boxes, which I'm going to show you. And each of these mats or boards are also look and feel like wooden, but they're also got this like matte finish and they also are etched really, really, really gorgeous. Both of these games are very easy to grasp as you sit down and play them, and they feel similar to a lot of abstract modern games I have played as well. These are not your basic simple like chess and checkers games. These involve even more complex thinking and strategy and skills, and this one even here reminds me of the game Patchwork, which was very, very popular quite a while ago and is still played to this day. This one here is kind of like a connection of game of sorts, and the fact that they all use use this kind of interesting web of life with pieces that function differently and look differently but all kind of feel and flow together in the same unique fashion. Excellent, really, really cool. Each of these game boxes I want to show you that they stack and you can unattach them. These guys here, they open from the back and they're going to come with unique little um, well, fold it's like foldable wood and there are little points here where you can go ahead and push this thing and open it and this is where you're going to put all your pieces and most of the games even have a little drawer a pull drawer where you can pull out and it's going to have a nice bag that you can take these games on the go so you don't have to actually take and utilize these games in these boxes here if you do not want to maybe you just want to take it to a friend's house in your purse or in your pocket or whatever you can do so or if you want you can take the whole box and the whole trilogy as well 
and they're foldable and they fit really, really nicely. And all of these games are compact inside of these boxes here. There's a lot of components for all the games. Specifically, there's a lot for the project variant. And I just love how they look, how they feel all of the different etching attached to it. This here for the Kickstarter, the very first Kickstarter is gonna have these little etch symbols on the side. And for the trilogy of games, it's gonna have this wonderful little rule book that is put into wood and it explains the rules for the games, specifically this one for Project. All the other ones have a smaller rule book for the game Connect and Come Back. Uh, and you can have this little wooden piece here that's etched as well that explains the game rules. So as far as quality goes, if you're looking for beautiful wooden abstract games, this has got loads of it. Now, let's talk about gameplay. This one here probably is the easiest to play. You're simply rolling a die or dice and attempting to attach pieces from your middle pieces to the areas here at the very end to connect three. But the unique twist to this game involves being able to block your opponent's pieces, remove them from the game, and slow them down with these six different variations on how you're going to be able to remove your opponent's pieces and have them place them again. Some of these are obviously more challenging to get than others, and most of them that you're going to see are going to be these triangles inter interlinked with one of these smaller, uh, longer tiles, uh, or the three triangles with the triangle in the middle, or these three pieces that kind of interlope around a triangle piece. But regardless, there's going to be those times where you use those really weird and wonky ways of connecting tiles to kind of overlap or overlay your opponent's pieces and removing more than one, which always feels great. This is a wonderful little game. Sitting down and playing it, we learned how to play it quite, quite quickly, maybe in about five, ten minutes. And we played this two, three, and then four times. So we sat down and learned the game, understood it. Once we got a good handle on it, we played again. And then another friend of mine wanted to steal my spot and play the game. And I got to watch and see the interactions between this game here and its unique twists and how you can ver how the variations work with based on choosing the die and like which piece you want to place based on how. You're not always going to get to move the pieces where you want them to go because the dice will limit you. So there's a little bit of chance involved in this game, but how you choose to utilize that chance and make up for lost distance or distance into the locations you do not want them to be at will change as you progressively roll these dice and move your pieces to kind of orientate them where you need them to go. Over here, this game, the uh, comeback game, uh, this one is more of a patchwork variant where you're placing down these tiles, trying to interlink them with the board. And I guess the only complexity about this game is figuring out where each of the pieces go based on this web of life and making sure that they all fit and learning how this geometric puzzle is going to be met and how you have to follow the basic rules for where you place it. And you can kind of like, oh, I don't understand how this goes. Then all of a sudden you feel the fit, you understand how it's placed and bam, it fits on the board quite nicely. Also following the rules, this five pip variant, this five pip rule or the five dot rule, using your token to kind of cheat that is nice. And the fact that there's multiple ways of gameplay is nice as well. Focusing on protecting your area or connecting pieces to score points based on color or choosing just to play the simple route of the game, which is the time variant and place as many as you can until you can no longer place. And then the player who was last to try and play is the loser, making it really nice and easy and including these little bonus pieces here to make the game easier for those of you who are newer to these type of abstract strategy games is a nice twist as well. At the end of the game, you're gonna get a beautiful design. It looks great, has great table presence, and I can see this being on many, many coffee tables all around the US. It is a beautiful experience, honestly. I was very, very shocked to see the quality of the design and just the fun and interesting and complex nature of each of the games. As for the last one here, which is the project, this one is definitely a complex experience. I went through and tried to understand the rules and watched the tutorial, and I probably just need to see a full playthrough of how it works, but I understand the fact that it is a social version of, of these type of games. You're utilizing uh, the nature of this web here in order to form projects and complete them together to score points and based how they fit together you're going to get more points and you're going to be working together with players at certain times and then against players at other times and you're also utilizing the uh, connect variant of this game and attaching it to that one as well and you're going to get a larger variant of the game so it's, it's, it's okay that I don't know because I wanted to give you guys just an experience of at least two of the three in the trilogy and then they'll give you a reason to take a look and see about that more complex extra variant of gameplay if you want something even deeper and even richer but as far as these 
these two games go. A lot of fun, beautifully crafted. I am uh, astounded by how well this was done. And I'm going to be keeping these games. They're mine. I, I, I really love them. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game or games, the Equilibriox Trilogy. If you're interested in seeing more about these games, go ahead and look at the Kickstarter. It is currently available right now. The link is in the description. If you would like, you can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you think I've earned your subscription and you've watched more than one video, I would greatly appreciate it if you just push that button, even if you don't turn the notifications on, just so long as I get those button pushes. I, it, it, make, it means the world to me and the wife and everybody else here that does these games. And hopefully, hopefully these have helped you in some way determine if these games are right for you or not. You can also go ahead and join us on our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot and every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, where I play games just like this one all the time so you guys can see the games, how they're played, and decide if they're right for you even more than just a review because that's what really matters. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to connecting in the web of life with you next time.